Korea. We have now one hour to talk about how to better learn from each other and how to get together. We have Elinos from the Hellenistic um, International, Elizabeth from Marsi, Evelyn from Endegelende, and Agnes from Hux, Hexen, that is to say, witches in the Chaos Computer Club. In our first round on stage, you're going to hear what these in individual initiatives are doing. And of course, we'd like to get some information about your initiative and which means of activism you use. Who is going to make a start? Well, I come here to represent Hedonistic International. It's not an organization, not an initiative, rather an idea. The idea is to have party action and protest, to use these three elements to stand up uh, for the good ideas and for our community at large. It's an idea that anyone can use and uh, carry out similar hedonistic initiative ideas and campaigns at home. So it, we have no centralized organizational structure. We don't want to have it. We would like to be completely decentralized group, um, firm, form, I'm sorry, form groups and uh, organize actions. How about you, Elizabeth? I represent a number of organizations. Marcy is one of them, a research product project we have started three years ago. It's about digital DIY networks. We develop them together with municipal, municipal initiatives here in Berlin. It's a product and a project uh, that uh, we carry out together with the UDK, the University of the Arts here in Berlin. And uh, here it might be interesting to talk about the action. We are a non-for-profit organization. We work with social and environmental transformation as a grassroots initiative. We are co-owners of Prinzessin Garden, an urban and gardening project in Berlin. And we work very much on the inter interface between politics, uh, the academia, and activism. We also create physical spaces for learning the neighborhood initiatives. The Masi project also worked in a way that we have created a space where people can get together and learn from each other. And uh, all kinds of dialogues uh, are organized there, either economic or e ecological discourses is where we talk about our right to the city. And how about you? I work for climate justice together with many uh, others. Endigalenda, my initiative, uh, calls for an immediate uh, exit from the coal-based energy sector. We use our physical bodies at the places of the destruction. We have just carried out a wonderful action where over 6,000 people got together and blocked the development of coal infrastructure in the Rhineland. Agnes, how about you? What is your activist instrument? The witches. Uh, we are the women at the Chaos Computer Club. That is to say, everyone who calls it herself a woman, uh, I am inclusive. And it's also about the CCC goals, digital citizens rise, and we're also interested in technology. So we are open to embrace all the women who are interested in technology, who are experts or not experts, but just look for like-minded people to develop better. We are also interested in feminism because we see uh, we have um, barriers. We have a quota of 10 to 15 percent women in technical professions that is not acceptable. And so we would like to change all of that. That is to say, we'd like to help people to, or women, to 
do everything they would like to do. Uh, no more role models uh, should be presented. And we call upon all members of the Congress uh, not to narrow their initiatives down to role models. We also have smaller initiatives, uh, set up smaller discussion groups so that you can uh, develop freely. So the binding element is physical meetings, right? So, of course, there are also other instruments one can use. Or would you say you never meet personally? Uh, it all depends. The witches were set up in 1998, uh, 1986, I'm sorry. And uh, at the beginning, we were just a complete virtual group of the CCC, the Chaos Computer Club. We met, meet physically only during the CCC Congress because in one town we used to have just one or two witches until a couple of years ago. Now we have five local groups in Berlin, in Hamburg, Hanover, Karlsruhe and Stuttgart. We have about 150 members and they meet indeed physically on a local level. That is to say we have restructured a bit in order to keep in touch with the people so that we can organize things, which means we had for many years just very small actions because meeting in a physical space, that was something we couldn't do. Now we can. That answered quite a lot of uh, my questions and I'm going to refer to those individual questions I had in the beginning. Uh, later. But let me ask the other panelists, how are you organized? How do you make sure you can make meet physically? Uh, because I heard that this is your common ground, physical encounters. How do you make that technically f possible to talk about uh, specific topics and organize local meetings? Uh, thanks, by the way, for this info that you have uh, a female group. As a member of CCC, I wasn't even aware of it. So who of you would like to give an answer regarding how you organize, how do you technically organize the physical encounters? Mm. Also, um, by the Hedonistic International. The Hedonistic International is some kind of a party context-based initiative. That is to say you would have a place, a natural place to get to meet and all the rest develops right from there. So meeting, first of all, is organized on the basis of email where somebody says, well, I've got an idea, let's meet. And of course, some of the people know each other quite well. They're networked anyway, so it's not... Um, a major structure. It's just an email sent to the people we know. How could I get to know you? Meeting you at a party, not only at a party. So it's not just about uh, partying, it's about actions as well. But usually the first uh, step to get in touch with us is to meet someone from our informal group. So personal contacts are very important because we have no central office to turn to. You cannot send us an official email saying, hey, I want to join you. It's about having personal relations. Last year, we set up the so-called Commons Evening School. This is something we do at Prinzessin and Garden, our urban gardening initiative. It's a weekly meeting. So every Monday evening we have open meetings and it's a space that we consider very important in the Commons Evening School. We try to keep and preserve our Prinzessin in Garden, our Urban Gardening Initiative. Uh, we are going to celebrate our first anniversary soon. A year ago, we started meeting regularly and personally. There was an open evening where everyone was invited. We also advertise our meetings right here every Monday at 6.30 at Oranienstraße 44. It's an open 
evening an open encounter. Everyone can come in. And um, this, of course, determines the structure of our communication and conversation. Over weeks and months, new people are joining. And that is also important because at the beginning we always have to sort of recap what has happened before. Of course, we write minutes so that we have a full coverage of our development. And the structure that develops there is a structure that works only in this particular space. We do not take decisions on behalf of the whole group outside those meeting. And that was a deliberate decision of ours in order to avoid conflicts and endless email discussions. And we also wanted to avoid a situation that more and more people intervene because they can read our emails, although they never come to the personal meetings. So we would like to make sure that our decision-making structures cannot be destroyed because of people who write endless emails. Uh, how about you? Ende Gelände, that's an alliance in the German-speaking area. Very much focused on Germany. We demand that Germany uh, immediately exits from coal-based power generation, but we also have members from Switzerland, Austria and France. But in our day-to-day -day work, we meet once every six weeks in a German city, we have our alliance meeting, and in between the six weeks, we work on the basis of working groups that organize their own activities. In my working groups, we have weekly telephone conferences. We use our iPads for communication and for the, pers for the me meetings, virtual meetings. Lots of emails, of course, mailing lists. And in order to have a link between all the different working groups and in order to remain capable to take smaller decisions and uh, have smaller arrangements, we have installed so-called coordination phone calls. What is nice about it is that in spite of our wide-ranging alliance, we also work very locally. Many local chapters have organized in some regions of Germany who do the grassroots work and also organize themselves. So it's a very multi-stage structure because of uh, ongoing coordination and harmonization of our efforts, we stay in touch. Um, you have different ways of adopting new entrants, new members, but there must be one central instance you have to contact, be it an association or a mailing list, or you just have to get to know certain persons. And if that person likes you, they would uh, talk to you about the initiative that they are running, like your Hedonistic International. My question is, do you have some kind of a core community or is it important to have such a core? How about the fringes? And who decides who has the rights to t participate in decision making? Nobody has any say regarding who wants to uh, join, who wants to be added to the mailing list. Uh, whoever has had a personal meeting with a witch gets on the mailing list. I know of no example where somebody was actively rejected. Usually it's the persons themselves when they first come and say, well, maybe it's not the right thing for me. But the first encounter with one of the witches is important. Yes. The best thing is to go to a congress because this is where we are presented. Otherwise, you would have to meet your witch locally. You can do that because we have a general list of contacts. And you might find a witch in your region, but uh, since uh, the witches, so to say women, are a small percentage of the CCC, uh, you can't find witches everywhere. 
the message also spreads by word of mouth. You have said you can activate 6,000 persons. How do you do that? Let me tell you how I joined the movement. The f I've seen the uh, second, first or second Ende Gelände action, and I was so thrilled because I could see all those people making radical demands and saying, we don't want coal on y anymore, we want climate justice. And uh, there was also a lot of criticism regarding the system. It was a very creative and powerful action of civ civil disobedience. And I said, OK, there is a local chapter in Berlin. Why not go there? And Ende Gelände also has an open structure. That is to say, we always invite uh, to our local chapter meetings and this is how I got there. I put my name on a mailing list. And for me, this physical space was so important because this is the group, this is the people I know, and these are the people I am connected to. And then as a second step, I became more active also regionally. And of course, that means much more digital communication, much more digital work and less physical meetings because they're difficult to organize uh, regionally and cross-regionally. But those uh, regional or cross-regional structures were already created when you joined. And there was a consensus amongst the min members of your initiative that it is necessary. Endigeland is an alliance of people that has changed over the years. It used to be an alliance of many different groups that had done work before. Uh, in the Rhineland, there is a local group which then joined the alliance. But meanwhile, we have grown. We have our roots and the local chapters are now a very important backbone for our initiative. They are the ones who determined what needs to be done. I s many of the members of our local groups have been in other local groups before, and many were present during the blockade and got this empowering feeling, yes, I can make a difference, and so I would like to be active myself. I would like to organize people based on that first time experience, this empowerment in, uh, experience they joined the structures Zeugung um, oder die emotionale Überzeugung I guess the difference between the supporter and the militant member of a group is whether I truly want to be involved whether I truly want to help or what I just want to support. If I join the blockade, I am the person who helps make the movement stronger. Now, are you involved in civil disobedience only, or are you also involved in other activities? Action for us is more than thousands of people who stop transports. It's also those who set up the camp, those who cook for us, those who organize the blockade, those who make sure that the infrastructure keeps working, who make sure that the action is an action. Because, of course, we need thousands who help us with the blockade, but around the blockade as such, around the protest moment as such, there are lots of activities to handle. Now, actually, we are dealing with two spheres or communities which we need to bring together on the spot and in the supporter scene. I would like to ask you now, after two days of our Bits and Trees conference, what have you learned and what would be you take on board in order to better achieve your goals?
I like the idea of trying to bring two very different debates together at all. And yet, I think we need more than two days. This can be nothing but a beginning. And, of course, we need a shared language, because that's what keeps dividing us. The environmental movement, the urban policy movement, people who deal with uh, digitization, we are all speaking our own languages with all our own jargon. So I think we need more such conferences, more conferences like this one, in order to truly embark on a dialogue and, uh, and communicate. Because we need the time and the space. And then, of course, It's also important to look at each other and maybe to also realize where the gaps in the other movement are or where there is something missing you could contribute. So it's about looking at the other movements in order to find ways to contribute. Agnes, Elena, what have you learned during our conference here? I rather felt confirmed in my conviction that it's extremely important to meet face to face. Yesterday there were people representing the CCC and Greenpeace in one and the same hall, on one and the same stage. and. I mean, this is an opportunity to truly exchange also information. Like, I, I didn't know that there were toxic materials involved in the clothing I wear or the clothes I wear or whatever. So, this is also a way of getting out of this particular niche because we tend to think what we know is what everybody else knows, but this is not necessarily true. I.e., I'd like to say that this conference has been extremely enriching for me and it's exciting to see that there are lots of things we share and that we can also help each other a lot. I'm also a member of the Hedonistic Internation International, the Yodel section, which is also attracting people of many different generations but then you don't have to tell much because you see all these people belonging to different generations and then of course if you talk about data protection or the exchange of data you achieve quite a bit and it's truly enriching to also talk beyond one's scope so to speak it's extremely helpful much better than staying within one's own realm. There are things growing together which truly belong together. That's quite true. It's a saying, but it's true. And I do remember the second congress I participated in in Tübingen. And we recorded whatever was presented and the students who could not participate in person and locally had a chance to also be involved. So I'm convinced that we truly have to work together much more and much closer. I myself am interested in women and technology. That's my topic, so to speak. But I think it's important to have conferences like this one in order to realize that it's important to get together. And we also realize that it's a very colorful movement or it's colorful movements we are involved in. There are many women who are very interested in technology. And on the other hand, there are many who are interested in 
um, ecology. So whatever witch's breakfast you organize, it's worthwhile. I like, in particular, what I see, because what I see is quite a lot. And it's good. It's good to have visibility. It's good to see the alternative options we are having already. A dialogue is key. I've been dealing with the question whether this can go hand in hand quite a bit, because we are also pursuing different types of societies. The world I would like to live in will definitely be a digital world. But then when dealing with the climate change, digitization matters too. Digitization matters a lot when it comes to sustainability. I've learned quite a bit Ende Gelände, for example, the initiative I've mentioned claims 100% renewable energy f for any energy supply needed. And I heard a number of exciting presentations yesterday in this respect. I mean, I know what resources you need for the hardware. That's evident for me. And I also know that digital technologies need a lot of energy. Thus, our struggles belong together. But for the first time, I've started to realize that a mutual impact is possible and that a lot of energy is being used and there are lots of flavors which we can move. We need to begin. That's what it's all about. So I feel inspired by this conference. And I mean, of course, you need to bear in mind that digitization and the energy transformation go hand in hand anyway, and yet. I would like to come back to what you said before. You said it seems evident that people know. And that this is not true if you look at what the situation is like in real life. Now, I attended a number of meetings during this conference, and I would like to ask you, do I need to fulfill certain requirements in order to participate in your activities? I mean, of course, we know that women are interested in technology, and it's a given that you are in favor of opting out of coal plants or coal energy. And yet, and I will ask two questions and you can pick the one you want to answer or if you want to answer a completely different one, you do so. So, do people have to fulfill certain requirements in order to participate in your activities? And do you think you are still using a lot of jargon. Someone said yesterday that veganism for trees is what free bits are for open source. Now, for me, bits and open source are also symbols representing lots of things which would be good for society. Does this apply to veganism and the trees too, I wonder. So what about the codings you use? Do you think you use encoded language? Fulfill requirements. Now, let me talk about our work in the municipalities, in the communities, and on the spot. Because we would like to have the participatory city, as you know, which, of course, requires a lot of self-organization. And that's, of, of course, an idea we all share, we here share. But this is, of course, 
what excludes many others from our movements because there are lots of people who don't want to be self-organized. Like people who don't want to have a community garden, they just want to do gardening somehow, somewhere. It doesn't have to be a special claim and a special neighborhood garden or whatever. It's not necessarily about guerrilla gardening or similar activities. So we need to bear in mind that there are certain conditions we consider a given in order to make what we want and in order to make what we do scalable, i.e. accessible to others. We need to translate what we think and what we do also to those who don't want to be in the self-organized world in order to sit together all the time. And language? Now, this is also one of the experiences of our group, which is being joined by new members all the time. We try to reflect upon the language we use, and we also talk about our jar jargon. And we do see our language and whether we can be understood also as a mirror in order to gauge whether we reach out. But who contributes the global perspective? How do you make sure that this is not only for, uh, this is not only about ensuing new members. Now, we offer a witch's breakfast. That is to say, we open the door, women walk by, and they come in and join us. And this is how the witches work. Last year, we talked about identity, exclusivity, inclusivity, and based on the experiences we have had in other activities before, we organized it on a local level and we talked about this topic on a given weekend in Kassel, in the city of Kassel. And we also considered the aspect of body language. The topic as such is problematic. Now mailing this as the standard format of the witches. And this is difficult if you want to really get a message across. So we are struggling to go for other approaches. There are people who suffer from the social constructs which are male or female. Now, on our homepage, we see we are open to women who are interested in technology, but it's really difficult to get a ticket for the conference for some. Thus, if someone enters the room, we try to not erect any barriers anymore. Let me answer your question in two ways. On the one hand, I would like to talk about the blockade, the action organized by Ende Gelände. We are organizing, organizing mass activities so that as many people can join us as possible. We also help them travel to where we are. We also help them prepare. We encourage people to join us, also people who have never participated in a similar event before. But of course, you need to have the time. You need to take the time. You maybe need to take a few days off in order to participate. And then, of course, if you participate, you might become subject to legal repression, which means that only if your residence, your abode in Germany is safe, you can participate. Otherwise, it's much too risky. And then 
you walk a lot, you run a lot, which is also an effort. You climb trees. That's to say not all bodies can join us, but of course we try to bear all this in mind, and our language also matters indeed. And we try to make sure that when we talk about plans, we use a language which can be, which can be understood by many, and we also organize translation if need be. But then, of course, there are also people who cannot participate. Oops, sorry, I forgot one aspect. Climate justice from a global perspective, that's what it's all about for us, because we are producing the climate crisis, first of all. We here, that is. Last November was beautiful because members of the Pacific Climate Warriors joined us for an action, for a campaign, campaign last year. And this year, again, we had an exchange with people in the Global South who told us that we are the ones who are active there where the destruction is triggered and they live where the destruction takes place. Nochmal weiterleiten. Um, I will now move on to a number of questions. There's a question, like for instance, there's a large number of organizations who stand up for, for certain rights and defend certain ideas. What do you think is the potential of networking such organizations? When would you consider an alliance? How do you take decisions with whom to network? Or would that be strategically also meaningful to say, no, let's not enter into an alliance, let's work on our own so as to make no compromises and not dilute our goals? It depends on the action we're talking about. I just thought of the Hedonistic World Congress. We have organized it already several times. CCC was part of that Congress, and they had their own stage. There were also other groups. And they did make uh, sense to get together because we needed many perspectives, and we talked about our common goals, and that is the alliance we sometimes form. It does make sense, definitely, to look at who could share this or that action with you. It could be sometimes very unusual partners like the local uh, fire brigade. So you have to think out of the box and look around to see who's got similar interests. Could be an autonomous youth centre in Neubrandenburg or wherever. Elisabeth, would you like to add? Yes, for us, that was an important item. From the point of view of sociology, uh, we talked about urban gardens and green spaces in the city, and so therefore it was important for us to be part and parcel of the overall rights-based discourse in the city. Because oftentimes people say, well, we need more housing. And this is what politicians are saying always, that they have other social things that are overriding ecological initiatives. And so it was important to have a network also with uh, social housing initiatives. There's an initiative for affordable housing here, for instance, that we networked with in order to say you need more in a city than just uh, a place to live. It should be a city that can exist over the next 50 to 100 years, so we cannot just simply build houses. So it is important also to link uh, several topics, to bring in the digital perspective as well.
and it's important to show that there are many intertwined aspects that, if neglected, create problems in the city. So uh, uh, the neglect of social needs and um, environmental needs uh, can lead to people being marginalized, being uh, removed from the city centers. And on the other hand, it, um, when corporations take over all the di um, digital assets, that's also something different. So you would say it is important also to enter into other types of alliances, although These diff these um, partners of yours have different goals and ideas, so you broaden your partnership whenever needed. Yes, I don't think we can look at this or that topic just in isolation. The underlying problems touch upon all spheres, and if we don't touch these underlying, deep-rooted uh, pro um, problems, we will not be able to make uh, progress. Our panel time will be up in 15 minutes. I'd like to use the remaining time to talk about some other issues and questions. What do you think when looking at yourself critically? What do you think are the uh, structures in your organization that uh, make it possible, make it uh, difficult for people to join because they sound or look elitist? We have heard about many perspectives. Have you any idea regarding the somewhat aloof or elitist um, traits of your organization that could raise the barriers for some people? Well, I think it is always necessary for an organization to ask this question. It depends also on the digital tools that we are using. We've just decided that those who don't have a smartphone uh, and have no signal, we use signals for communication. I mean, those who don't have a smartphone, they would be excluded. And so I'm always saying, we need to also send out emails to the couple, the handful of people who do not have a smartphone and need to get this information as well. These are the small nitty gritty problems that crop up in your day to day activities. And of course, as far as the major issues are concerned, we already addressed them. So let me just refer to the day to day details. So we need also to understand that we need to be networked to tackle the common issues. Most of us do not carry out activities because they want to have a party or want to have a party or want to have no more call. It's also about ulterior goals, visions. So it's a holistic idea for all of us and so it's quite logical for our organizations to get together and that is also one of the strong strengths of the climate justice uh, movement we have learned so far from so many uh, initiatives like the anti-racism activities and also we need to learn from the european movement the european movement gives you a lot of information uh, of uh, of enthusiasm this summer we were together in climate camps with people from france poland and, and it was so inspiring there are probably probably also other initiatives uh, that would give you a different answer and would say well of course i see that there are problems that are concerning everyone, but the purpose of our organization to, is limited to this and this. We have received funding only for this and that initiative. So maybe there are some external pressures as well. Maybe it's not the right topic for this panel. But let me move on to the next question we have received from the audience. What do you need to organize better to have a better network and how can others contribute to give you what you need to become a very viable organization what can 
other con others contribute both materially and ideally so that you can really achieve your goals. This is your time now to launch a call for ideas or launch a call for sponsoring whatever you need to say and want to say. This is your time now. That's a very dangerous question because, of course, the freedom of profession is something important to us as well. And that means we would like to improve girls' uh, choice for a technical profession. So you all have to join us, uh, you girls out there, you, uh, when you educate your own children, um, bring your nephews, bring your nieces. We all need to be part of the same uh, initiative. And we must develop a feeling that uh, girls can teach the boys and vice versa. And girls can wear pink on and still give a technical lecture. That's OK. It's enough. It's not enough to just have a group of witches. We can just trigger a number of effects. We are a gl we need global equality, and that is why do join us. As far as finances are concerned, we are part of CCC. We can file applications for projects internally. We have a limited capacity, um, human uh, resources. If you want to join, you're always welcome to do so. And we need the help of everyone here. Maybe um, there was a question in the room, and of my question, uh, we have collected questions in writing, but maybe one of our uh, colleagues could come and see if that's an important question we haven't addressed so far. Well, of course, leaving the coal-based industry sector, I am afraid that our coalition government is not going to take a decision in favor of an energy transition. So go to the clim climate justice groups in your town, region, city, and join their initiative. So what we need is people who keep on fighting, and of course donations are always welcome. Of course you will find information on our website. What we need is people, people who come with ideas how to stand up for a good life for everyone who are enthusiastic to talk about such an issue. That's the only thing we need. As I said, the Hedonistic International is not a uh, an organized initiative. Everyone can be on board. Everyone can contribute, maybe with the exception of AFD members, Alternative for Germany is a right-wing movement and party in Germany. So maybe those AFD people uh, think twice and maybe conclude that their fascist, uh, neo-fascist ideas are bad, and then they are welcome to join us as well. Everyone who is willing to think will be welcome and join our solidarity. So you're a low threshold initiative going to a party? No, no, the party is just an example. You don't have to run to parties all the time in order to meet one of us. Join one of our actions. So it's about having fun as well. Because whatever we do, we must have a positive vision regarding our future. Of course, you cannot create a peaceful society on the basis of a violent revolution. For that purpose, if you want to have peace, you need a free society that enjoys life and that is free of violence. And so this is our idea. It's not just about partying. Revolution. Well, what do we need? I might be saying something very polemical, but we need a major transformation of the system, a huge transformation of the system. What we as an, as an association need is something different. We think we also need another educational system, a different type of learning, a, an educational system that encourages people to learn in a different way instead of just producing completely homogeneous and adjusted people. 
we as an association, when you ask us what we need, uh, when it comes to project applications in technology development, there we need a financial support that will only bring be granted if you invent something new. You always have to be so damn innovative. So what we need is something sustainable. Innovation, of course, is important. And oftentimes there is no funding, no sponsor available for initiatives that want to carry out a down-to-earth practical work, creating spaces for exchanges of ideas. One final round and one last question. Two questions. We have three minutes. We can handle two questions. The last but none, one question is the question, the crux of the matter. Now, what would you do if you had already achieved all your goals? All girls and boys would be equal to ch and could choose a profession freely. Uh, no more coal would be used for energy generation. And your organization would also have achieved their goal. If everything was done, what would you do as an association and also personally? Celebrate. So basically the same. I can't answer that question. Because some new issue will be there. Well, I personally probably will always be involved in this or that process and will find things interesting and start engaging. What we would have is a very green, affordable uh, city, and it would be quite nice, but there would be some other problem I could work on. If I were in an economic system that is no longer growth-based, if I didn't have to, wait to work to make a living, if we had no more fascism and racism and just the renewable energies, then I think finally I would learn to program. And Agnes, yes, if all of that was done, I would build things, build things that help people either software. I mean, software is also construction. It's a construction of things uh, that are available in a computer. My very last question comes from you and I will give this question to our audience. Please do think about how can we invent organizations, things, initiatives that do not exist yet. This is my question to our audience. Try to answer that. I would like to thank our panelists and I'd like to wish you a nice Sunday.